Hello, mammals of terra firma, Archangel at your service. So, <laughs> a funny thing today, I was talking with a person about male devaluation. Yeah, I know, how often does that happen? And they said in response to male devaluation, Oh, I don't know about all that. Since we know patriarchy exists, there is just too much evidence of it throughout history. Obviously referencing the visibility of males in authority positions and female submission to them. Ah, yep. Once again, there is the magic word, patriarchy. Patriarchy is an agenda word, used in much the same way a person would use Nazi. It is meant to incite a reaction and opposition to the negativity the agenda word represents. And patriarchy is definitely used to trigger outrage and rally together female sympathy under images of ruthless oppression. Okay, fine. Yes, we can see males in authority positions throughout history. Yet, when people say patriarchy, they use it in an inaccurate, even dishonest way. They use patriarchy as synonymous with androcentrism. And this is folly, for the two are most definitely not bedfellows. You see, patriarchy is essentially human traditionalism, which is the default setting of Homo sapiens. Strip humans of wealth and technology and reduce them to bush-dodging survival creatures and the physically stronger, more cerebrally cunning and assertive creatures survive better. And so the more timid, physically diminutive beings seek protective alliance with the physically stronger. And so the diminutive beings will make concessions with the strong whom they seek to use for their own survival. Meaning, females willingly offer reproduction and submission to male rule as barter for protection and provision. And when you have millions upon millions of people following this default template, century after century, thus we arrive at what everybody calls the patriarchy, where males are in visible authority positions over females. And we think, oh, the poor females are being dominated by these totalitarians, not realizing that females play the role because they are using males for personal protection and provision. Females submit for self-serving reasons, not selflessness. If chicks did not want to play submissive to males for protection and provision, they could have left dudes and built shelters and survived all on their own. But did they? People use patriarchy to mean unjust, unfair, unbalanced, but people rarely realize how much more females benefit from this arrangement, where they send men out to build everything, putting their lives on the line, taming the hazards of nature, while also defending and maintaining society. So, since males are the creative forces of this plane of existence that get everything discovered, innovated, and built, since males are the ones that think and reason and apply justice, since males are more effectively equipped to physically affect their environment, since males do all the toil and dying that growing civilizations require, as a result, Yes, maybe there are a few extras that males demand in return, and female subservience to males was one of those concessions. But this is not inequitable. It is standard for the person that brings more to the table to get more say-so. The person that puts more investment into a business gets more shares of the company, or more ownership rights, or votes on the board of directors, than those who bring less. If party A invests 65% into a venture, they should then rightfully expect more authority than the 35% expenditure of party B. So males building, laboring, defending, and dying for society, society being the future investment that both sexes work on for offspring benefit, this is greater than females' investment of child rearing, cave cleaning, and vegetable picking. Both are necessary. One just has higher investment, meaning males risk their lives. If females had demanded that cavemen stay at home while they went out to innovate, discover, build, and tame nature while fighting off the other hostile humans, then they could have claimed a matriarchy where they received male submission as a perk for their increased investment into civilization. Yet, it was to female benefit that males went out and did nearly everything risky, dangerous, and fatal. Hence, females wanted patriarchy, where males do everything, and in exchange for hazard, males occupied visible positions of authority over females. 
Did some males use their might to mistreat females throughout history? Yes, sure. Just as some females use their wiles to mistreat males at the same time. Anyhow, fast forward to today. Now, we use this word patriarchy as a catch-all female oppression phrase. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy! Woo! But people don't really understand that patriarchy does not mean a world for men by men. Patriarchy is not some good old boys club, and females either don't understand or will not acknowledge how they have advanced ahead of males under this patriarchal regime. You see, male devaluation happened under the so-called patriarchy, and females have flourished under male authority. Yet people wield the word patriarchy when their true meaning is to imply androcentrism, where societal priority is focused on males, and everything is ultimately for male benefit. Hmm, well, under patriarchal tyranny, males gave females the right to vote, and drive automobiles, and own property. How does this benefit males? Under the evil patriarchy, males gave females the right and legal prerogative to divorce males, take their material assets, and children. How does this benefit males? Under patriarchy, males allowed females exemption from draft. Males gave females the right to join the military, yet be spared combat. Males gave females extra funding and initiatives for college entrants or female-owned businesses and mandated female hiring quotas for businesses. Males have legislated lesser sentencing standards for females than males. Females are allowed to order the genital mutilation of their sons. Males allow females to use the law to ruin men. At the same time, we encourage the social indoctrination of males to treat women with special courtesies not afforded men, a.k.a. chivalry. Males defend females against all harm, even the consequences for their own actions, and females are given preference in any emergency situation. And all, all of this happened while patriarchy has raged on abusing females and stripping them of rights. Androcentrism? Really? Public mockery of males in television and media. Males dying to defend liberties or women's honor. Preferential funding to female issues. I, how does any of this in any way benefit or advantage males? People parrot the propaganda of patriarchy, which they really use as an accusation of androcentrism. Yet, male homeless rates, suicide rates, combat and hazardous job casualty rates, parental rights, involvement in society, schooling, community, these indicators of collective male welfare tell the truth. We are gynocentric because we use males as fodder for civilization maintenance. If we were androcentric, we would let females go homeless before a single male. If we were androcentric, we would use females for hazardous jobs or as machine gun fodder. If we were androcentric, we would put money into male health issues and initiatives before any female concerns. If we were androcentric, we would give males priority in any emergency situation. And so it would be men and children first when the ship was sinking. If we were androcentric, we would not legislate anything that would adversely affect males. And females driving, voting, extorting men's property and raising misandristic children or or ruining men's lives with a single allegation, all of this is detrimental to males. So we would strip women of these rights and make them wear burqas so they could not manipulate men with their wiles. All you need to see the truth is two things, a couple of brain cells to rub together and the ability to open your eyes. The evidence is all there. We are not androcentric. We are gynocentric. All is done for female welfare, and females are protected above all else, as they have been throughout history, simply because of their gestational biology. Patriarchy, feminism, traditionalism, conservatism, these are just catchwords, and we bicker over these words that describe allegiance to the same master, the feminine. If you want to get past labels and all the noise of the gender squabbling in order to know a society's real, true priority, ask yourself this. Who does the dying? Which sex dies in protection of which sex? 
Furthermore, if you want to know who wields the social power, just ask yourself which sex you are not allowed to criticize. Males die in protection of females, and we are not allowed to criticize females. Males have had career, reputational, family, and financial ruin because of female criticisms. Meanwhile, females can slander males all day long in public, private, on TV, anywhere. Ultimately, the fact that males die in defense of females means that we are gynocentric, period, point blank, finito. Let's think about this. Androcentrism would, by necessity, demand that females die for male welfare. And this would be reflected in the casualty statistics throughout history, where women died defending their men, their families, their communities, their liberties, and freedoms. It doesn't matter that they gestate life and are weaker than men in such a hostile, hazardous environment that demands the blood of the weaker that the stronger might survive. Thus, androcentrism would demand female death for male survival. Yes? So, please point out where females have been sacrificed by the millions throughout history for male benefit. Any lucid, rational mind can deduce humanity as gynocentric, meaning we enact for female welfare, female benefit over males. Hence, all the agenda-loaded words or soundbites are just interchangeable monikers, a smokescreen of semantics for indeed Patriarchy and feminism have the same goal of female elevation and infantilization, because both have the same master, the gyno. And to understand this truth, simply observe that feminism sprouted and has flourished under patriarchy. Male genital mutilation has flourished under patriarchy. Male mistreatment has flourished under patriarchy. Indeed, males lose their lives in mass under patriarchy, and none of this benefits males. Patriarchy is not androcentric. All constructs and paradigms of human pack interaction are gynocentric. This means females have superior life worth, not males. Patriarchy is simply what we call the traditionalist default paradigm of females submitting to males, who are charged with protecting, providing, building, and maintaining everything. Banter the word patriarchy as much as you like, but it does not mean what people imply. It is not some elite secret club for men who are enriched at the expense of females. Patriarchy is, at best, a position of middle management, where a few backstabbing alpha males assume visible positions of authority in public and private sectors. Yet all the while, they pander and court females, their superiors, and they supervise and direct the male workforce, their subordinates. Males do not benefit from traditionalism. They are still abused. They simply get a few more temporary perks of having a wife play submissive and appreciative to you as you bleed yourself for her welfare. Patriarchy. Tss. Please, we are gynocentric above that. So it does not matter the sex of those in visible control. Females gained rights and privileges over males under patriarchy. Males have been used and discarded under patriarchy. And neither patriarchy or matriarchy, nor monarchy, oligarchy, or hierarchy, no mullarchy, would make any difference to equity or fairness, so long as we are gynocentric. We are not, nor have we ever been, androcentric. You hear that, ladies? You have benefited and been vaulted to pillars over men while under this patriarchy. You are exempted from war. You get to ruin men's lives, take their kids, their crap, and hit them whenever you like, and be spared reciprocity. You get social perks because of your sex, with chivalry, and legally with lesser sentencing standards, presumption of motherhood, affirmative action, special schooling, business, and health concern funding, and ladies also get mortal perks, such as being spared war or combat, and receiving priority in emergencies. Oh, and you know what? You have received all these perks under patriarchy. What part of we are gynocentric, not androcentric, do you not understand? Because of uterus, we favor females, not males. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy. This is all agenda baloney. Females gained rights and entitlements while males lost rights and entitlements under patriarchy. That evil, nefarious, Y-chromosome, testosterone-rich brotherhood predicated upon suppressing females in order to advantage males. When females are stripped of legal rights, social courtesies, and made to die for males, 
Yeah, then we can talk patriarchy like it means androcentrism. However, females are elevated, coddled, and worshipped as males toil, labor, suffer, and die. And this has been a constant throughout history, no matter the sex of the person with the gavel, or wearing the religious robes, or occupying the head seat of government or corporation. Gynocentrism reigns over all. Patriarchy means nothing. Go ahead, say it again. Patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy. Like it actually means something, or that its verbal repetition actually proves some oppressive narrative. Truth is, females exploit males' need for female validation, and they parlay their role as the regulators of sexual interaction to control males. Hence, at the most basal level, females rule over males, and ultimately, males die that females might live on, with their makeup and iPhones and the kids and divorce settlements and their right to hit males, have their doors open, bills paid, groceries carried, etc, etc, etc. Patriarchy has proven itself gynocentric. Whew, my friends, stand with me. Live free.